This episode we're going to look at lighting and prefabs and both of them are kind of intertwined because in order to do lighting you need to understand what prefabs are. So a prefab is short for prefabrication. It allows you to essentially reuse something that you've made over and over again. And I'll show you how these work. So in here we have this 3D model, which is let's say our stairs that we've made. Once we have this selected, we can go up here to prefabs and we can select prefab and there's different options here, but we wanna go center on origin. And what this will do is it will click that as our prefab and we're gonna name this stairs. And this is just gonna be in our maps forward slash prefabs folder. This is just the default directory that they have. And now this is a prefab. Now, if we go to our prefabs folder in this asset browser here, we can find our thing here that we just made. We have to search for it, I think. So what was it called, stairs? There we go. So there's no preview. Uh, sometimes this uh, menu doesn't update for when you add a new prefab. So now it allows us to add this back in and we can go and drag this. Now, if you make something from another map, and you want to import it into your custom game, into any other map, you can do that too. So I've pretty much made a duplicate and you can select the multiple items. So instead of selecting just the stairs, I could select this thing and this thing and have both of them be in one prefab together. So you can select the multiple items and become a prefab. And that's just an example of what you can do with a prefab. And this is uh, not really useful to us right now because you might not see a very good use of that. So we're gonna delete it. And what we're gonna do is look at this prefab here. And this is a template prefab, meaning that we need to make a duplicate of it in order to be able to edit it. So if you ever try and edit this, it won't let you. So you have to make your own one. It's one that's like, uh, it's read only. So what we need to do is go to the prefabs that already exist and this is the radiant entities so we need to go down here to basic entities radiant and we want to double click on this and this will open up the file but what we want to do now is go save this as and we want to call this uh, tutorial radiant ends so this will just be our name of our file you can name it whatever you want so now this is made as a copy and it's a map file so we're able to edit this and in here there's a couple of different things that are quite important to kind of our custom game and this is why there's uh, kind of to explain each one of them so these little men which are like the half-life men uh, this is where players can spawn and this location over here is where the courier spawns and you can move them if you want to, to whatever location now one of the ones that we're gonna look at first here is the lighting. So this is the event global lighting. And if you look down here, you can change what the lighting is and fiddle around with the lighting settings. And that's just the global illumination that happens in your level. Then you have this one over here, which is end Dota light info. And this one is kind of like a spotlight and it will blend with your global lighting so whatever you make in this it will kind of like overlap on top of it so we'll make it red just so it's super obvious of what like it's doing and there's a day and night so there's a day color and a night color and they're all slightly different here by default and when you're this is a lot of the reason why we were setting the day night cycle to be turned off because we might only want to deal with the lighting from the daytime or the nighttime and say we just have to set the daytime color now the other one that's here is the fog color so the primary fog color is this we could set this to something else the fog is essentially the further you get away from the camera they add some sort of fog that kind of blurs things out or like kind of make it a better performance in your game and you have this one here then is your wind this is also some sort of visual effect that affects uh, trees and players can turn on the fog on and off or sorry the wind on and off as well in their settings with video setting and then you have water level of detail control and this one is the tone mapper which deals with how 
the colors are blending with the lighting and fog and stuff like that so and this last one is the game events which are to do with dota and what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all so we have everything selected and we need to make sure everything is selected and we're gonna create a prefab of this so this is the changes that we've made so first off we're gonna just save our file which is the our map file and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna export this as well and we're gonna select center on origin. You can select the main world offset if you want. It doesn't really make any difference in this scenario. So we save this as, our prefab is called tutorial uh, radiant ends. So this is, so our map file and our prefab is pretty much the same naming convention except they're in different folders. I think that's the only difference between them. So now we need to go back to our previous fold file we were doing. So if we go to recent files and we go to, uh, what was the name of our map? Tutorials map .vmap. This is still open in the background. So you don't have to worry that it uh, closed and didn't save, it did save. So now what we have is in our map, we still have the template prefab that was here that Valve provided. And we wanna delete this and we wanna replace this with the one that we were just after making. So if we go into our prefabs and search tutorial, we'll get tutorial radiant ends and here it is. So we have this here and now it's the exact same thing. Now let's say when we run this, let's uh, you'd have to build it and do a full compile, but let's say we wanna edit something in this prefab. What we can do is we can double click on it and when we double click, we're now in a special mode that allows us to edit this within here. So we could change the color of the lighting and whatever else here as well. So we could make like the lighting much darker if we wanted to. So we get kind of like a dark color. And if you want to get out of this mode, what you need to do is up here, you need to select this and go back. And you need to ensure that sometimes what you can make a mistake on is while you're in this prefab editing mode you might end up building like a box here or something and then that's tied to the prefab so every time that you make a duplicate of this prefab or drag it into the map that would end up having that box as well that you added into it but we don't want any of that so as you see this is just our prefab here and let's go build this now and see what it looks like so now that we've loaded back in we can see that the global lighting is a little bit darker and we also have the red as well. And there's a red tint on everything. It's even affecting the cape on Ray King where it's like a, a red tint now. But what gets really weird is when we move the camera to the right, it starts to get bright again. And at the other side, it starts to get bright again. Pretty much the further we get away from the spotlight or the closer, the more intense that that spotlight ends up doing. So you might wanna modify that spotlight or the, the light that's there and probably just deal with the global lighting rather than having a spotlight that's gonna be blending over it. But this is showing you how like, if you entered an area that was um, like, let's say in a, a boss fight, you might want the darker colors or something like that. So what we wanna do is click this one over here, which is end tool. And we wanna click on to down here. The one we're looking for, I think is EVT. It starts with EVT or EVN. So it's called light info. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, ENT Dota light info. So we can create another light, let's say over here at this location. And we could change this light to something else. And we could change this to, let's say green. So it's like, again, really obvious that what's happening. And we can, let's have a look at this light over here to see what the settings are. So in here, it has the light scale of five. So we might wanna change the scaling of the light during the day to five as well. So if we go back and we just editing our map now, rather than the prefab, we select this again. If we double click on this object, we can get up a floating menu rather than using the menu on the right hand side. So we're gonna set this to five during the day and the other stuff we're not really gonna set. And we'll just see what ends up happening if it makes much of an effect. And we'll, we'll set it even higher, let's say. I think maybe we have to set the size of it as well. Yeah, I, d I think the size isn't set, so it might not do anything. But we can get the settings from here. Let's see this guy. 
So he has specular direction. So that's the direction of the light. And if you want to change the direction of the shadows, if you open up the game, you'll end up seeing that the shadows are casting from the left hand side to the right hand side. See this black shadow here, the gray color? That's uh, the direction of the shadows. And you can change the light so it comes from the right hand side as well. And I think you can do different directions between the day and night. But you need to be careful that sometimes when you do shadows that are too big of an angle, the shadows will be really long and kind of obstructing for, it makes it harder for the player to see. So you need to be kind of careful with doing very, uh, whatever you call it, obtuse angles. And you can set the weather and everything. There's a bunch of different stuff you can do with these lighting stuff. But what we wanted to look at was see, is there something else just in case we're missing it? Okay, I'll just build it and see what ends up happening. So now when we move the camera, it's not changing anything here. But the reason why is because the light is not being set properly. So we need to have some sort of setting here. So inner radius and outer radius is the ones that we want. So over here, if we go back to our map editing and our inner radius was set to zero. So we need to set this to 100 and we're going to set the outer radius to be a thousand so that we when we select it we see we have this sphere and we see the other sphere then for the spotlight as well so we go and build this now and we should get the green thing when our camera gets into that location So now when we move the camera, we can end up seeing over here is red. And when we move this way, it turns to green. And you see the shadows become much longer as well. So by, see the shadows getting way longer? That's because the green thing is creating that shadow. So that's uh, really weird. So you see how like you can do these really bizarre stuff. You want to be kind of careful what you're doing with the lights and how you're changing the settings. So this is because some of the colors are set to like black, which are not set properly. So it does show you though, like how you can mess around with those values and get something that fits best for your game mode. So if you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like. And if you wanna see more custom game tutorials, make sure you subscribe.